Institute of Technology, yeah. right? And, uh, yeah. and in the meeting, we have sent the circulation, we have sent the invitation mm -hmm. to all the uh, second, third, and final year students of electrical and electronics engineering as well as mechanical engineering. Today, for uh, institution uh, for students, uh, uh, they are writing their examination and afternoon uh, is a holiday for them. <laughs> so we are expecting all the 100 students are going to participate in this event. Slowly, the count is getting increased. Uh, once again, uh, thank ETG Technologies for giving us the opportunity and uh, uh, giving uh, sharing the knowledge on uh, gravity battery. It's a new concept. This will be much more helpful for the mechanical engineers as well as the electrical engineers. They can explore their knowledge on uh, okay. energy storage devices as well as on the battery sector. Thank yeah. you, thank you for your uh, acceptance and uh, in the lecture. And I thank Mr. Tamil Chilvan who's uh, always be with me and supporting the organizing all the students for this meeting. Thanks, Tamil. Over to you, Arthur. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Varun. So, once again, welcome. Uh, to all the students and faculties of uh, SRIT Institute. So let's uh, begin today's session. Okay? So give me a moment to present my school. Yeah, is my screen visible? Yes, sir, it's visible. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Varun, for the confirmation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, students, so let's start with uh, today's session, which is uh, on the gravity battery, basically what it is and how it works, what is the concept, and what are the things involved in what is the background of it. So, all those things we will cover in today's session. And uh, let's get started with it. So before uh, actually getting started, I would like to let you guys know that uh, I will really appreciate if you uh, unmute yourself and uh, try to answer the questions I will ask in between or if you have any kind of doubts in between. So you could let, uh, let me know via chat box or let unmute yourself and ask the questions. Okay? So that will be greatly appreciated. Let's uh, move ahead with today's session. Uh, so firstly, we'll see what exactly we'll be covering here in this uh, small gravity battery related session. So firstly, we will see what energy is and uh, what are the different energy storage systems are there, then uh, power plants and different energy demands, how it fluctuates uh, at the uh, consumer end, then uh, how the power plants, they have solutions to store the excess energy that they develop. And after that, we will see what exactly the gravity battery and how it helps uh, to save the large scale um, electricity. Then we will see how, what is the construction of it, what are the different components of it, and how does it basically work. Then uh, at the end, we will have some discussion. With, uh, I will try to have a discussion with you guys what uh, you learned today and what are the future scope of this technology. So uh, I will appreciate if you take participate in that discussion. So yeah, let's get started with the first topic. So first thing is energy. So what basically energy is? So uh, may I know? Uh, does anyone of you know what energy means? And uh, we talk about a lot of energy here and there. And uh, so what exactly energy is? Energy neither created to be nor destroyed. Okay. Yes, Sanjay. So that's basically the. Uh, we can say property of energy and law of conservation of energy as a, being an engineer you, you definitely know that it surely can neither be created nor be destroyed from the beginning of uh, making of universe it's there and it's constant throughout so yeah that's the thing but what exactly how how could we define the energy in simple terms
So for let's say we have a mass. So mass we can say something which uh, uh, has some volume and which uh, extracts some volume inside the space. So that thing uh, is a mass and which has some some of its own weight. It is so what the ability to, to do mass. work. Yeah, great thing. It's uh, I see it's Mirza is one. Yeah, right answer is one. So energy is nothing but its ability to do work. So whatever work is happening around us is it requires some something which uh, it can be done. That's only. So energy is a source that with the help of which we do some kind of work. So whatever, like I am speaking now, I am doing a work. And uh, how what is making me do this is energy. So that what energy is, it is ability to do any kind of work, whether it's mechanical, electrical, some sort of chemical reaction, anything which takes place and which happens around us, all entire the universe, it takes some amount of energy to happen. So that's energy. Okay. So for uh, there is a fun fact that uh, what is energy is the world's most asked question as of now. So you see how curious uh, people are to know about what energy is. And uh, as some of you already said, I said Sanjay Pillay mentioned that uh, the conservation of energy. So as we discussed, it's completely constant from the beginning of universe, and uh, it will it can just be converted from one form to another form. We can neither create energy and we cannot destroy the energy. Okay? So there are different types of energy uh, in the universe. Uh, let's say there are mechanical energy, electrical energy, chemical energy, nuclear energy, thermal energy. You might heard of. So plenty of things are there. So may, may I know? Do you guys, apart from the names that uh, I mentioned uh, here, uh, do you guys have uh, any other sort of energy that you know? Gravitational energy. Yeah, gravitational energy is one thing. So you see here in this animation, uh, in this animation that uh, energy is being converted from uh, one form to another form. Like the sun, we get a photon or heat energy, then it uh, reaches the ocean, water gets vaporized, and they when they go high in the sky, so they get potential energy. When they come down, they get a kinetic energy. And uh, at the generator end, they rotate the uh, turbine blades from which we convert it into electrical energy and we supply it to wherever the application is. So that's how energy cycle works in the entire universe. The energy remains constant at. Yeah. So moving ahead, so we, we already have like we require energy to do all sort of works, but we cannot uh, have energy continue. Uh, I see Sabrish, you are making disturbance here and uh, muting me. So could you please stop doing that? And if, if you are not here to learn, you, you can please leave the meet, okay? I request for two operations that there is someone named Sabri. Yeah. Just uh, dismiss him from yeah, the. Yeah, we are looking into it. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm really sorry for the inconvenience, guys. So, let's move ahead. So, we know we have different sort of energies uh, we can have, but uh, we cannot have the constant supply of energy whenever we need. There might be fluctuation in that. So, Whenever we need energy, we need to have it stored somewhere. So that's why we need to have various energy storage systems. So it could be at different levels. Okay. So how we can store the energy? That's the first basic question. So energy could be at various scales. It could be of around few watts of energy, few joules of energy, a few watts of energy, then some kilowatts, megawatts, gigawatts. So it increases as the uh, demand at the consumer rate increases. So for different energy storage system, there might be different scales. Okay. So what are different energy storage devices based on the uh, uh, capacity that they store? What, what do you think? What are the different types of energy storage devices are there? In our day-to-day -day life, we come, come across various sort battery. of uh, battery. Yeah, exactly. Battery is one of them. Like it store chemical energy. Mm -hmm. 
and provides so, us electrical energy. One thing is battery. Yeah. And just there is not just battery, there are multiple things which stores energy in themselves. Yeah, Karthik is saying fuel cell, correct. Thermal energy. Thermal energy. Not energy, but the device which stores that energy. So do you know what the device is called uh, that stores the thermal energy? Insulator? <laughs> no, it uh, does not store the energy, but uh, it like it entraps or the, it uh, just restricts the flow of heat. So, but it's a part of thermal batteries. There is a concept just like gravity batteries. There, there is one more concept as a thermal battery which stores the energy in the form of heat. So that also could be one thing. Okay. Any any other devices like these are just you are mentioned battery capacitors. Yeah, exactly. Capacitors, capacitors, ultra capacitors, super, super capacitors. So, so they also store energy, but. Uh, like it depends. Each of them has their own uh, advantages and disadvantages. Uh, inductors store. Yeah, inductor at some extent it also stores the energy, but uh, it cannot be for a very long time, and you cannot count it as a distinct energy, energy storage device. Yeah. yeah. So uh, just here I will give you a hint. There could be some mechanical energy storage devices as well. Yeah, uh, we have flying wheel. But flying wheel, it's flywheel. Yeah, sorry, flywheel. Yeah, so flywheel is there. What flywheel does is it takes the excess energy, which is so in case of engine, uh, in four stroke engine, you see there is just one power stroke and rest three of the strokes, they consume the power from engine. So how that energy is provided? So one power stroke, which happens, that energy is stored inside the flywheel and it rotates and it supplies, which is required to, for another three strokes. And it has other various applications. So flywheel is also one energy storage devices. Okay, so I guess you guys uh, have idea about what are different energy storage devices as of now. So by like uh, being human, we also are some sort of energy storage devices, but we can utilize it for ourselves itself. So whatever food we eat, it gets stored in our stomach in a form of chemical. And we utilize it for our own purpose. But what these energy storage devices they do, you can utilize it for uh, other purpose. They just store the energy and don't consume it. So that's the difference. Okay. So yeah, let's move ahead. So now we'll see what are different types of power plants are there. How we, uh, so like basically we can say we generate powers, but basically what we do is we convert it from one form to another form. So what are different power plants are there that we uh, come across? So there could be different ways we can generate power. But uh, first, let's see that uh, what happens, what electricity we are consuming right now is like constantly being generated at some of the other power plants. But the demand that uh, in cities and the uh, commercial industrial areas is not constant at each and every point. So what happens, there are fluctuations in the demand. Okay, so you can see there in the, uh, the daytime uh, there is a less energy, like there is a more demand, and during the night time there will be less demand. But uh, what we generate at the plants is a little different. So what we have to do is whatever excess energy the power plants are generating, okay, so those things we have to uh, store somewhere so that whenever there is a less energy or when there is a high demand and the supply is less so we can utilize that energy to uh, provide it to the cities and the residential areas so that thing is there so there are different types of power plants you might have the thermal power plant and a nuclear power plant and uh, some renewable energy resources are as well there. so uh, what do you think uh, what happens inside thermal power plant basically They generate energy. Yeah, but how, how exactly? All all the all of them generate energy basically. So the thermal power plant generate energy from heat. Yeah. So what happens? The coal is burned there uh, with the help of like some uh, natural gas uh, could also be used. So water is there. Water is converted into steam. Then there is a there are steam turbines. So steam turbines, they are made uh, 
to work and uh, whatever how their rotation whatever uh, electricity they generate we get it transferred to the consumer end so that's how thermal power plants work and boilers then, yeah boilers are there so so boilers are utilized in thermal power plants yeah so the, there is a like a uh, water is used to it gets heated up and uh, then that it's converted into steam and some and superheated steam for uh, better efficiency and uh, it gets uh, the energy which we generate it gets supplied to the consumer and uh, there are nuclear power plants as well so uh, you might know there is a uranium yeah fusion yeah 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 electrical sorry nuclear fusion and nuclear fusion so there are two terms so uh, what basically uh, is done in the nuclear power plant nuclear fusion is used they break the atom into uh, two or three parts uranium atom and it creates a chain reaction which generates a high amount of heat and uh, that heat is utilized again to convert the water into the steam and the same cycle goes on as it happens in the uh, thermal thermal power plants but the difference is we are using here a nuclear energy and here we are using the coal and uh, our the fuel basically natural gases so nuclear power plant they also generate some sort of uh, let's say bad effects on the environment they have they create a radioactive material as a as a outcome so that's also a thing to get disposed which is harmful in the nature but uh, as compared to what emissions we get from thermal power plants it's, it is very less as compared to so that's a, another topic of discussion so to overcome all these things we have renewable energy resources so do you guys know what renewable energy resources mean and uh, what are the renewable energy resources we are using uh, now wind energy and hydroelectric yeah. yeah wind energy is there geothermal solar power hydro power plants yeah geothermal exactly geothermal yeah geothermal Bio energy. Energy. Yeah, biogas is also one of them. So there are, and uh, one more thing, very common, I suppose you guys are missing. Windmill. Windmill is like all the Solar energy. Solar energy, exactly. Solar energy is there. So these are like renewable in, uh, energy resources. When we uh, try to get generate electricity from these resources, don't generate any kind of uh, hazardous. Uh, that is waste or any kind of uh, pollutant outcome there is nothing like that so these are the very much environmental friendly okay. so let's uh, talk some uh, about some other uh, thing as well so as we are now all the automotive industry is shifting towards the electrification now we are having the electric vehicles in market so their electricity demand is surely going to increase right all the all the people they will try to charge their vehicles which has a like lot of about 150 kilowatt of capacity so energy demand is going to increase and uh, to fulfill that demand what power plants will do the governments they will set up more power plants to generate and to compensate for the energy demands but uh, if we keep generating energies or electricity from this thermal nuclear or uh, uh, we can say conventional ways it won't be very much effective shifting from conventional vehicles to electric vehicles because what happened in conventional vehicle we we were used we used to uh, get harmful pollution from the vehicle itself but in ev even we are having a zero emission solution but the electricity which is uh, being getting input here in the battery it's being generated uh, from the conventional source itself which are generating high pollutions so no matter uh, if we are having a zero emission solutions in, the, in another manner we are uh, developing a pollution so in order to overcome that and uh, to avoid that situation in future we must have to shift to renewable energy resources right? then only it will make sense shifting from commercial vehicles to electric vehicles right so uh, what what do you guys think uh, here is uh, are we doing good in making the renewable energy resources? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's actually good to be mm -hmm. in uh, environmentally mm -hmm. free. Like exactly, 
Exactly. So as far ecological balance, yeah, but we definitely. will be facing a lot of challenges. Like battery depreciates its life, mm. its energy as exactly. we keep. So hmm. if it if it's kept idle at uh, like its shelf life, basically what we call it as. So if it's kept uh, idle and not being used, so it uh, there is a self discharge in batteries. Yeah. Yeah. So that thing is also there. So uh, when we are shifting from one technology to another technology, there are a lot of challenges that we face. <clears throat> okay. For example, if you say wind energy or solar energy, what are the uh, concerns of having solar as a source of power? Solar. Uh, so if we are using solar, mm -hmm. then we need a lot of uh, a, uh, space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at, at installation point of view, if we say, yeah, uh, a lot of area is required. That's the one thing. Area, then we need. High speed require... wind are not useful for uh, wind mm -hmm. turbine. Yeah, uh, exactly. So what what is there is we cannot have uh, uh, heat from the sun sunlight constantly uh, entire day. The sunlight will be there just from morning. So let's say. Seven or eight, like intense sunlight, till in the evening five to six. But uh, in this time only, solar uh, solar uh, cells would work. What after six to six in the evening to six in the morning? So this twelve hours of time, we won't have the supply of energy. And but we have demand. We use electricity in this remaining twelve hours as well. What we have to do is we have to save the energy that we are. Uh, uh, we are generating in the daytime, so that's why we also need to have the energy storage systems, right? Energy storage system, what we call it. But uh, let's say we use like batteries. So batteries they are like very costly, and uh, they also have some self discharge rate. And uh, having a large and bulk amount of batteries, it is very difficult practically. Because uh, there are thermal issues with batteries, there is a maintenance for that. So uh, everything is a large, large amount portable. of energy. Yeah, and they are also not portable. Energy storage device need not to be very much portable thing. Uh, when we are talking about uh, mass scale storage, and uh, in wind turbine also, uh, wind is not blowing uh, constantly 25 hours a day. So that's also a thing. So whatever energy we generate here, we have to store it somewhere. So that's how energy storage system comes in picture. So let's talk about uh, those energy storage system at uh, power plants or high scale uh, energy generation is there. So how we store the energy? So let's see first. Thing. So the first thing that people do is battery banks basically. So there are like uh, for not a very Fast adoption is there in terms of battery banks, but uh, some of the power plants and some companies they use lithium ion batteries to store energy in a bulk. Then, after that, there is a compressed air energy storage. So, what happens? Uh, I will just explain uh, briefly that uh, whatever energy we are developing, this is an energy power plant. Okay. This is a power plant. So, there is an excess energy which is coming here, which uh, as of now, which has no demand okay, which is not being used directly what we do with the help of motor we attach one compressor and with the help of compressor inside the ground we compress the air okay so and we keep it compressed and whenever there is a more energy demand and from energy store energy power plant we are not having fulfill that demand what we do we release that air which goes through the uh, expander basically uh, that rotates the turbine inside it and then we get the electricity generated. So that's how it works. We, from the energy that we develop, we utilize it to compress the air. Then that air is again uh, released and it rotates the turbine weights and then that's how we get the energy back. So that's one of the form of energy storage system. Then there is another thing called as flywheel energy storage system. So what happens? There are large and huge bulk size of flywheels out there. So what they do? There is a motor attached at the end. Whenever there is excess energy, with the help of motors, it is delivered to these flywheels, which rotate at very high speed, and they have very high moment of inertia. 
so that makes them keep rotating for a long period of time so what happens uh, electricity supplied from the motor and it uh, makes the flywheel rotate and uh, whenever we require energy so we convert the motor acts as a generator and that rotating energy it's uh, then converted into electricity again so that's how flywheel energy storage system also works they are on a very large scale and a very big flywheel sort as what we have inside our engine car they are like very huge in size and uh, moving further there is a pump hydrostatic hydroelectric storage so what happens uh, in this uh, power storage uh, power storage system is basically whatever energy we have we with the help of pump what we do we have a lower reservoir here and we have a upper reservoir here. so at lower reservoir we have water stored with the help of pump that excess energy we have we lift that water to a upper reservoir and it is stored there so as the height increases it has a potential energy stored here and whenever we have excess energy demand we release that water and allow it to flow through the pump now it acts as a generator earlier it was acting as a motor pump now it's acting as a generator so when uh, uh, water flows through there we get that energy we converted into electricity and then we again supply so that's how uh, the from the hydro power storage works so do you guys uh, like can you guys let me know what are the flaws of having uh, such a huge uh, power storage devices or energy storage devices so firstly let's talk about batteries what what could be the issues with batteries carbonization carbonization yeah so basically the uh, their electrodes and all such things so there might be some uh, at high you can say when we are storing at a very large scale uh, there might be some toxic gases in this uh, inside the battery and um, along with that batteries don't have very temperature of battery yeah yeah exactly temperature of the battery has to be maintained as uh, there are lot number of batteries and high voltage batteries is so another thing is a uh, long life or the life span so batteries don't have that uh, very long uh, battery lives okay life span you can say they have around 1000 uh, or uh, at the max 7 to 8000 uh, life cycles they can work on and if we talk about uh, charge discharge or uh, in terms of uh, years they it's around at the max 8 to 10 years so what after that we cannot uh, have lot of amount invested in batteries and which has to be replaced within just 8 to 10 days 8 to 10 years sorry so that's why batteries are not the best choice for the energy storage solution. then compressed air energy storage you might see how uh, complex uh, the mechanism is and uh, how uh, large area and investment it will require and it's not that much efficient as compressing the air inside the earth and uh, getting it uh, depressed so that is not that much efficient and when we uh, talk about flywheels as it's a mechanical component so i hope there are mechanical guys as well so could you uh, let me know what sort of losses we can have in this flywheel energy storage system so basically how it works is uh, there is a motor it uh, makes the uh, Light will rotate and it keep rotating for a long time. And when we require uh, energy, so we extract it by turning the motor into generator. That's how it works. So, what could be the losses? A uh, frictional loss. Yeah, yes, correct. Uh, whenever there is a mechanical component, there comes the friction. So, where exactly friction could be? Cylinder walls. yeah cylinder walls we can keep them apart that's how we can avoid them like torsional torsional force is there right mm -hmm. so what 
yeah yeah so, yeah yeah so you can see there are bearings here to support the rotating element right so in order to avoid the uh, mechanical uh, friction losses what we use is a magnetic bearing which uh, keep the flywheel uh, flowing in the air so with the help of magnetic effect magnetic levitation so that's how we avoid the friction and also uh, to avoid the air resistance so when flywheel is rotating it, it might come in the surrounding air which uh, might reduce the motion so what we do we keep it in a vacuumed cylinder so you can see this is a vacuum uh, generator is there which uh, sucks the entire air and the entire inside environment of this uh, flywheel storage is completely isolated from the air so that's just vacuum which uh, reduces the overall mechanical loss but uh, we cannot have it for a very high megawatts of energy storage it will be just used for uh, uh, some little amount of energy storage at some backups in the medical uh, hospital or the military bases all such thing we can use them as a backup but uh, not at some power plants as well so that's the uh, flywheel energy storage system so uh, could you guys let me know what could be the problem with the uh, hydro power plant storage yeah, basically it's a good idea to lift the water up when there is a it requires a lot of space exactly and uh, you, it requires a lot of height from where it have to fall exactly location uh, is the concern so yeah. you have to then select the yeah vinay can you tell me again maintenance is critical yeah definitely like there is a uh, uh, huge uh, storage is there then mechanical forms and some transformers will be there so maintenance will be high so what what is there as you guys mentioned uh, it requires a proper place to develop this kind of energy storage system where you have a height uh, naturally build a height around the north hill area Which has some sort of slope, and where you can make a uh, lower reservoir, and where you can make a upper reservoir. Then you have to uh, put a lot of water there. And, uh, there, there might be uh, evaporation happening due to the sunlight, so that water level could reduce, which can affect the overall efficiency of the uh, entire storage system. So there are multiple constraints with all the energy storage system that we discussed. so there there are other solutions as well that could be uh, come across to store the energy at a large scale okay. so let's see what are the solution and the uh, thing is the battery uh, gravity battery that uh, we will discuss about okay so gravity battery is one of the solutions to store the energy at, at very large scale so you are seeing uh, the basic funda of gravity free falling body diagram <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yes. If we are throwing up, if we gain potential, it will energy. come down. So yeah. what you do? Then you have excess energy as a, in terms of uh, this uh, hydro power storage. You see, when you have excess energy, you lift the water at a certain height, and when you require energy, you drop it from that height, so that you get that potential energy converted into the rotating energy of the turbine. So it's the same thing, but here we are using water, right? and maintenance of which and uh, pumping it at a uh, high uh, high it's uh, difficulty so instead of water we could use some other thing as well so that's the concept of gravity battery basically so uh, there is an object that you take at certain height and uh, you release it from there so whatever energy you put there to take it to that particular height you can have it back when it falls down so that's the same thing when you have excess energy you make the rotor move and lift the weight up instead of water there will be a heavy weight okay so when it goes up it will store the potential energy and uh, when you release it it will come down and it will uh, have a kinetic energy so that's the funda of gravity batteries so you see this is uh, one of the energy gravity battery energy storage system so there are cranes six cranes Okay, in different axes, and these are the mechanical blocks. So you can see from the top view. These are the cement blocks, heavy cement blocks, and they are like 
very much heavy around tons of weight they have and this this height is not very small you, you might assume it is several like hundreds or hundreds of feet basically. so there are like thousands of blocks which uh, when there is excess energy uh, what they do the cranes they lift those blocks and place it up uh, make a stack of it and whenever we require excess energy those cranes they drop it down and wherever they are connected with so that motor now acts as a generator and uh, again generates the energy so that's the funda of gravity battery and this is what uh, some uh, power plant uh, the energy storage developers can cross so what so is the medium we use here so uh, medium by what do you mean the medium is like uh, this is the gravity battery so where yeah. it is storing its yeah so that's the thing when when you take something at certain height you you generate a potential energy there right yeah, so the potential that, energy itself is a medium no i i got that the potential mm-hmm. energy we are generating over there the body which which type of body you are taking over there yeah so these cement blocks as well as well these are the small small blocks not small very big one basically but uh, there are multiple uh, such blocks which uh, these cranes carry at a height so that's how we store potential energy and whenever we require we drop it from that height okay and whatever in the same way you can see this is a so block. if we are it's dropping strong. it from height yeah. uh, it will be hitting somewhere on the ground so yeah there, so there should be something yeah. we should observe that kinetic energy yeah that sort of thing could also be included there but uh, uh, might that its impact might be not that much as we are getting it from dropping it from the height so that also uh, can be considered uh, sure. uh, so whatever when it's falling down the pulley which it is attached to it rotates and uh, in result it generates the electricity it can break the object too no no they are made with the uh, very Uh, strong composite materials, and they are not just dropped as they hit the ground. They are just placed at somewhere, and it's like completely controlled mechanism. You can see. So it it works in a very arranged manner. You can see that this is how they arrange the blocks. So it, it this type of battery is uh, moving hmm. nowadays, sir. No, it's is not it? moving. It's a uh, uh, like it's is constructed it? at the inside the power plant or wherever the energy. Conversion of high transformation are there, you know, charge grids and all such things. So there itself they manufacture it. They uh, place it basically. Oh, uh-huh. so it's very at very large scale. Uh, if you could search it somewhere, you might see it's very at very heighted uh, several uh, floors. So, so nowadays good. it is utilizing some. Yeah, yeah. there are some uh, manufacturers or the electricity generators they use this kind of uh, mechanism basically uh, as my research is there i have seen siemens is is in collaboration with some company to generate the power plant and uh, with their uh, any company yes yeah, siemens mm-hmm. yeah siemens siemens the german company of basically electronics and all yeah they are they using direct cement or they are uh, making it a composite material it's cement i am not talking about cement cement oh so that's the thing okay so let's see how what is the construction and working of this battery basically so uh, you you now you might have already known yeah so uh, now you might already know that uh, there is a uh, some weight and when it is lifted up it charges the battery okay so in terms of potential energy it stores the energy that's how it is charged and when you drop it down it basically discharges and generates the electricity that can be utilized okay so that's the construction there is just motor generator some gearing or transmission till the mechanism is there and there is a weight which has to be lifted up or dropped down 
the help of reality so that's the basic uh, construction of and working of the uh, gravity okay. so now let's talk about uh, who is making this gravity battery so one last question sir yeah please sir as a uh, uh, this concept uh, i have learned in some uh, ninth or tenth uh, mm -hmm. on free freely falling body mm -hmm. so in freely falling body we assume that uh, air around us is negligible like the force acting mm -hmm. on the body is not mm -hmm. negligible but if you are applying it on the practical sense right, then mm -hmm. uh, air air contact also affect the body's uh, kinetic, kinetic energy right yeah exactly so what will be the difference uh, the potential energy we gain and the losses we after that we get yeah so it it depends on at efficiency height, yeah so it depends on what height you are dropping it from what is the area it's being in contact with and uh, so basically these two are the major factors that will affect and uh, with the help of engineering like uh, simulations we try to reduce the contact area and optimum height we have to select from which if we uh, drop it down then we will uh, have a minimum losses to construct surely the whenever there is a mechanical system or any physical system it's not ideal there must be some loss happen so in gravity battery itself there are losses as you can see there is a pulley bearing mechanism and all such things so surely the losses are there but when you talk about gigawatts of energy so those losses are uh, like uh, not at that much so we go to construct uh Okay. Yeah. So moving ahead, who is making these gravity batteries basically? So, uh, what what do you think? How uh, apart from this concept that uh, taking something at certain height and dropping it from there, what could be the another thing or another way we could uh, make these batteries? Okay, so uh, yeah, not able to get the question, sir. So this is the one way we could store with the help of gravity that lift something up, and uh, with, like this is the one mechanism that we could use to make gravity battery or utilize the gravity as a energy storage thing. So what could be another infrastructure sort of thing that we can come across to utilize the gravity as an energy storage? Thing? okay so uh, let let me answer that no worries so there is one uh, startup called uh, gravity city basically uh, so what they are doing is they are uh, making the gravity batteries of now as you already know the working mechanism of it there is a heavy load which goes down so we generate electricity and to store it we have to run this generator as a motor to lift this up when it is at the topmost position it is completely yeah. charged and uh, when you drop it it starts getting the stars so that's the uh, what gravity city is doing already but what unique concept they have is uh, they are not uh, taking it uh, to a certain height as we saw in these images okay so they are not doing it but uh, instead of that they are instead of that they are uh, making this mechanism work in a mine shaft so uh, you see when the mining happens uh, the engineers they dig down into the earth and uh, extract the ores from there but when the resource is like completely exhausted those mine shafts they remain as it is uh, there is a large hole inside the earth so what they are doing they are utilizing those things so instead of making uh, heighted cranes and all such things you could directly utilize these mine shafts just uh, we have to put the heavy load there and arrange some uh, motor generator system so that we can uh, easily drop that weight down and uh, charge our uh, discharge our battery and charge our battery that way so what do you think how how is that, how amazing is this idea because we are not investing in making very huge cranes and making those cement blocks because you you see there are like 
uh, hundreds and thousands of blocks uh, stacked over each other. And uh, making this crane and working mechanism is also requires a great engineering. So instead of doing that, if you could directly utilize what is already there, like mine shafts, so how great it will be that we are not putting a lot of manufacturing and uh, research and development in. They are just utilizing what is already there from the long time. So that's what the idea Gravitricity has and that's how they are uh, making the uh, shutdown mining uh, shafts in, in utilization and converting it into the energy storage systems. And there are multiple ways uh, it can be beneficial by with the help of controlling the speed of uh, dropping it, we could control the uh, power output. So if we require very instant and quick power, we can drop it at very high speed. And we want a continuous but uh, very low power. So we could drop it slowly so that we can generate a consistent electricity. So in that way also, it's very helpful. So this is how the gravity battery and uh, this gravity startup is working. And uh, that's the amazing idea to store the energy. So whatever excess energy is there, you won't waste it and it can be stored in a very efficient manner at very large scale. So let's have some discussion. What do you think this idea has flaws and what would be the future of this thing? And could there be alternate solution to this? What are your take on this? Uh, we actually have like many soldiers like mm -hmm. uh, that uh, saying there are many challenges. For example, the one you stated like the vents and we already have these. Uh, we could also build this uh, by digging out a hole in the ground. It's much better yeah. than building it up uh, uh, like a you know multi-story building. It's no point because uh, yeah. first of all, the six-sided grain is going to be very unstable. We could have much more better alternatives for that. And we already have gravity wells that can uh, mm -hmm. help us uh, make this more feasible. So it's, yeah. uh, it's like a more uh, modern futuristic adaptation of the dams for example mm -hmm. but instead of water we're just pumping up concrete blocks and another risk that i think about this is that uh, by man uh, when we manufacture the concrete blocks it produces a lot of carbon lot dioxide. Of exactly exactly so, uh, that would only contribute to the pollution and we're trying to make the world pollution free by using electricity so that's a bit contradictory Okay. Definitely. Well, you are trying to save electricity, but uh, instead of like doing that, you are wasting a lot of in making that energy system itself. So that's completely contradictory thing. So this is uh, what Gravity City is doing. The amazing idea. They are they are not investing anything or any energy or polluting environment in any way that uh, in manufacturing of these plants. They are already there. And if they are being wasted, so they are utilizing electricity. So uh, that sort of thing, uh, what do you think? Should we adopt this technology in India as well? Because it's, it never, uh, it, yet it had not been came to India at all. Like sir, uh, how it is storing the energy? Like we are calling it a battery, right? Mm -hmm. Like how much for how much time it can store energy? Yeah, for till the time you can hold that weight uh, at the height, it could store that energy and it has no discharge rate at all. Okay, so uh, let's say you have something, you have lifted it up, and now it has energy in it in a form of potential energy. Once you drop it, uh, it will discharge that potential energy in terms of velocity and whatever string and mechanism you attach to that. Can be utilized to generate electricity. It's just a concept of gravity which is being used here. Basically, it's a potential energy, gravitational potential energy. We can say. So potential energy could be of different type. It can be stored in a spring, okay, and or the rubber band, anything. But here we are using gravitational potential energy. So, so weight also plays a role in this. Yeah, definitely. Because potential energy, what is the formula of potential energy? MDH. MGS, exactly. So M is the first term, right? I'm sorry, I'm writing it with my mouse, so it's not that clear. So the weight that you are lifting up and the height 
at which are left over. These two things are the major uh, factors that will affect the overall performance. But sir, mass yeah. is something different. Weight is variable, right? Mass what? is the mass. Mass hmm. is something different. Weight. So let's is... say I I can rewrite the situation as W into H. What difference it will make? W is nothing but mg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's the thing. It's very simple engineering concept that they are utilizing, and uh, it's a very easy way to store energy at very large scale. So you could also do it at your home. You feel like you have excess energy can coming in. You could attach one motor there. Uh, if you live at a certain uh, a ten story house, so just lift that weight up, and when electricity is gone, just drop it down. You will have the electricity generated again. Get your phone charged sometime. So that's the small yeah. scale application you could build of your own. Yeah, it will be good for apartment type of building. Yeah, uh, and you happen to live at Burj Khalifa's top height, so you could store a large amount of energy and uh, extract a, a very large amount of energy out of that. So that's the uh, analogy that you could use. Okay, so uh, now I would like to put one point here. Uh, uh, what if what can like uh, I'm sorry. Is there anything that apart from gravity that we can use to uh, make this kind of concept uh, as a battery? So what battery does, gravity battery does, it pulls the weight down and it generates or it converts the potential energy into electricity. So could there be some another way of doing it instead of uh, dropping it down? Some other way around you could think of. I would just give few minutes uh, to brainstorm that thing. Rotation. Sorry. Rotation and movement can also. Rotation. Have... So how how would you uh, make the thing uh, come back again? In terms of gravity, you with the help of uh, energy that you have, you lift it up, and gravity mm -hmm. pulls it down. So in terms of rotation, how you are uh, supposed to do that? Well, <laughs> actually, I had the idea of you know uh, because we have such a lot of. Manual labor present, we can use a lot of people to you know generate electricity, electricity through rotation movements, for example, through like bicycles, and uh, we can incorporate and con incorporate such systems. Uh, for example, we have the electric Yulu bikes. Instead, we could uh, encourage people to rather use the cycles to you know generate uh, means of transfer, and it will generate, and it can you know uh, in we can incentivize them by offering them. Some money some for it, uh, for yeah. the electricity that they generate. Sure, sure. But but uh, Ayush, that that's the thing you can implement at very small scale. You cannot charge like megawatts or gigawatts of uh, ele electricity, right? Yeah, that's it, true. It could be just some uh, watts of energy that you could store in some lithium-ion cells and batteries. Hmm. So I'm I'm uh, here talking about the large-scale energy storage. All the entire uh, session was on the. I completely focused on a large scale energy storage system. Well, uh, we have that because uh, in the you know windmills. <laughs> windmills are like uh, not energy storage devices. They are generating it with the help of winds. Yeah. So let's uh, not uh, make you guys wait. There could be uh, uh, one thing. So just I I will give you an idea about that. So you have an air bubble or air entrapped in some block or some isolated system. And you take it deep down to the uh, sea inside the sea. Buoyancy. And, uh, yeah, exactly. Buoyancy effect. So when you you have put energy in keeping it till the uh, depth of the sea, and when you release it, it will automatically go up. So that way you can also utilize that thing. So that's the thing uh, I was talking about. So buoyancy effect you could use. So but uh, it will have a lot of challenges to. Uh, feed the, those energy generators, motors inside the in the very depth of the sea, and the height could be the limit there. And uh, yeah. there will be water it as will a cost millions of uh, rupees or dollars exactly. to gen, uh, make a device Such a system mm -hmm. which can uh, work under that high pressure. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, but this is just an idea that uh, we could uh, uh, come or thought of or. There, there might be some places where we could require to store uh, electricity inside the sea. There, in future, there might be 
some uh, research plants or something going on inside the sea where we have to develop uh, such energy storage devices so in that way also we can use it if not completely very much efficient because uh, as we can see uh, there might water is in co completely in contact with this body so there would be a huge amount of losses and all such so there definitely would be uh, great challenges here in development of this but just to give an idea of this is another way we could uh, utilize this concept as an energy storage system i have mentioned it here okay yeah yeah so uh, i hope uh, you enjoyed today's session and if there are any sort of doubts or something we could take that for that just uh, we will have a review of what exactly we learned today so we saw what energy is uh, someone answered that uh, it's a uh, ability to do work and we have to uh, have energy in order to do any sort of work so that's the thing and what energy storage system why we require it different types of power plants we discussed about thermal power plants nuclear power plants then renewable energy resources and how the energy demand fluctuates it's not constant throughout the 24 hours of the day in the daytime we need more energy and in the night time we don't uh, use that much of electricity so that uh, excess energy and the uh, excess energy and shortage of energy power plants has to compensate for so that's why they use high uh, high scale energy storage systems so that thing we talked about like what are the different large scale energy storage systems there is a battery banks then there are mechanical flywheel energy storage systems we talked about then air compressed energy storage system and hydropower energy storage system so those three four things we talked about and then we came to know what the gravity battery is how does it work what is the construction and uh, what gravity city is doing, how they are utilizing the uh, abandoned mine shafts to make this gravity battery and what amazing concept it is. Then we had a good discussion on what sort of things we could use in place of gravity. And so that's the overview of today's session. So if you guys have any sort of doubt or discussion, you can please let me know. It's almost five. Sir, uh, as in the figure for uh, mm -hmm. gravity battery, mm -hmm. we have used a cylindrical ob object, right? Mm -hmm. uh, do the shape also plays a role in that? Yeah, it, it might play a good role because it's coming in air. So you could make it more aerodynamic to reduce the effect of uh, air resistance. It, you can be, make it pointed like a rocket so that when it comes down it won't feel much of the effect of air that sort of design implementation you can have from the mechanical point of view uh, do the size of the object also plays a ro role in energy yeah storage? size size how size is not the concern basically the mass is the concern okay you can see because size it will how it will affect it will uh, affect in a negative way because more the size, more area you would require to uh, make that uh, system and more the area, more the air resistance would be. So having a smaller size will help you to get the better and efficient uh, performance. So we require more density material. Yeah, yeah. high density yeah. material basically, which has a lot of mass in a small volume, that sort of thing. Okay. Okay. Sure. okay thank you thank you very much uh, everyone and uh, especially the uh, sri ramakrishna institute of technology and uh, the faculty members uh, who collaborated with etg to make the students aware about these things okay so all the thank you thank you Mechanical... yes mr Varun. yeah thank you thank you for your presentation it was a great uh, uh, help for students to explore their knowledge on uh, gravity battery and power plants Thank yeah. you. On behalf of Sri Ramakrishna Institute of Technology, we extend our sincere thanks to ETG groups. And we want to have more collaboration with the ETG definitely. groups. If time permits, we will meet in uh, person also. Yeah, definitely. I would love to meet uh, such amazing person. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, uh, thank you. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. So, students, before you leave, there is uh, one thing from ETG uh, for you people. So, uh, whoever attended this session, uh, I'm just dropping one Google form link. 
Okay. So what you have to do, you just have to fill out that form, and uh, there you you have been asked about the field you are interested in to learn about. Okay. So you just have to select that field, and uh, uh, our team will contact you, and based on your interest, you will be. Even uh, one free course from ETG to complete, and twenty-five uh, percent of you who enrolled in all the programs and finished completed those things earliest. So those people will get certificate for learning those things. So that's the thing we are giving you from Flag Techno Groups for attending this informative session. Just go through the form, fill it out, select your suitable suitable field of interest. And uh, we will uh, have a communication with our mentors. They will guide you, and they will help you choose best program. You will you will learn it completely free. But for certificate, whoever the twenty five percent of you who completes this program earliest, they will get the certification. Yeah, everyone. I am here for another two minutes. If you have any concerns or doubts regarding anything uh, about today's session or about ETG, you could ask me. I am more than happy to answer your doubts. Okay. I really enjoyed you guys. Unmuted yourself to participation and uh, answered the questions, took part in the discussion. Especially uh, Ayush, Rizwan. Uh, I really appreciate uh, you guys uh, taking part in the discussion. it was just our uh, curiosity to learn sir. yeah and it must be there being an engineer it must be there yeah thank you ahad for such an informative no, session yeah we like sir we are not able to receive certificates sir certificates what certificates are coming for this session for this session and uh, before uh, for session i have I was not received any certificate, sir. Okay, so we like what you could do. Uh, you can see in the chat box.